Welcome to Dr. B Music Theory. I have a question from Swabi who writes uh, in a comment to Lesson 15 which was about harmonic progression. Thank you for your helpful videos and making this easy to understand. I'm wondering if you could also explain how to harmonize a note in the melody that isn't in the scale. So how to harmonize a non-diatonic note is just another way of saying a note that's not in the scale that you started with or not in the key. So for the, our sake of simplicity we're going to use C major so a, say, uh, as, our, as our home key and any one of the five methods of, of five different kinds of chromatic harmonies that I've already discussed in my lessons are going to be a great place to start figuring out how to harmonize that note. So the f one of the things that we can use is a secondary function. And I talk about this in lessons 35 through 39. So go back and review those lessons is a good place to start. And secondary functions are when we're talking about five of some diatonic chord. So a five chord of a diatonic chord to our C major, or a seven diminished of a diatonic chord to our our home key of C major in this case. We're going to limit ourselves, again for the sake of simplicity, to just taking a, a non-diatonic note, then we'll need a non-diatonic chord because you can't harmonize a non-diatonic note with a diatonic harmony. The only way you can have a, a, a pitch that's not in the scale and not use non-diatonic harmonies is to treat it as a non-chord tone. But if you want to harmonize that, which is what Swabi was asking about, we have to use a non-diatonic chord as well. But we're not going to chain them. We're not going to go from one non-diatonic chord to another. We're going to go right back into our key, at least when we're dealing with secondary functions. Now, in the case of modulation, which is another way for us to deal with harmonizing a non-diatonic note, uh, this is covered in lessons 40 to 42, and here, we might just say, here's our non-diatonic note, and let's harmonize it with a non-diatonic chord, but then it continues in a whole other key, and with diatonic chords, but of a new key. So that's another one we can use. Mode mixture, which is covered in Lesson 44, is another way that we can come up with some harmonies to harmonize this non-diatonic note. We can use a Neapolitan chord, which is discussed in Lesson 45. And then finally, use of the augmented sixth chord, uh, which is lessons 46 and 47. So what I've done now is I've written out the kind of non-diatonic pitches that you will see. So sharp one, which in this case would be a C sharp, flat two, which would be D flat in the key of C major, sharp two, D sharp, flat three, E flat, Sharp four would be F sharp. You'll notice I kind of skipped over the E sharp, F flat area. Those, because there you do have that enharmonic equivalency, it's, it's rare that you're going to see those notes. But if you do, you can apply the method that I'm going to be talking about shortly. But let's keep going. Flat five would be G flat. Sharp five would be G sharp. Flat six would be A flat. Sharp six would be A sharp. Flat seven would be B flat. Now, uh, I would like to emphasize that for our purposes, C sharp and D flat are very different pitches when we're harmonizing. Yes, people might say, Dr. B, it's, it's the same note on the piano. How can you say it's different? Well, the answer is it's not different based on what note you're playing on the keyboard, but where that note is going to resolve is going to be different. A C sharp is going to want to resolve, typically, to a D. Whereas a D flat is typically going to want to resolve down to a C. It's just the direction things go in, this, in, in the relationship to this key. So we're going to have, and it's going to put us into different keys if we think about them in different ways. So let's first start by thinking about it as a sharp one. You're writing a piece, you're harmonizing a melody in the key of C major, you have a C sharp in the melody, what do you do? Well, that C sharp can either be the root of a chord, the third, the fifth, or the seventh. 
again, we're going to limit ourselves because we don't want to go completely crazy right off the bat with so many possibilities our brains can't hold it. Yes, you can harmonize things. You do. There is such a thing as ninth chords, eleventh chords, and thirteenth chords. And some of you have already asked me to talk about them, and I will do so. Not just not today. So for now, we're going to limit ourselves to root third, fifth, or seventh. So we can use that and just look at secondary functions and ask ourselves, well. If we, this C sharp was the root of, let's say, a five chord, five of something, that means it would be a C sharp major triad. That root would want to resolve down to an F sharp. But F sharp is not in our key of C major, so we can't do that. We can't have it be the root. Well, let's see if we can have it be the third. C sharp is the third of what major triad? The answer would be an A major triad. A would resolve down a fifth to D. Is D in our key of C major? Yes, it is. So here we have an option. We could harmonize this C sharp with a 5 of 2. Because that C sharp is the third. Now, knowing that it's the third, we know that we could also have it be a 5 7 chord of 2. 5 7 of 2. And we know we could put that 5 or 5 7 in, in, in any inversion and it would still work. So we actually have a whole bunch of possibilities in terms of slightly different timbres if we were to harmonize that C sharp with a 5 of 2, 5, 7, or 2, some inversion. Well, what if that C sharp was the fifth? In that case, we'd be dealing with an F sharp triad. F sharp triad would want to resolve down to a, some kind of B triad. Well, we do have a B in the key of C major, but it has, happens to be a diminished triad. And secondary functions don't resolve to diminished triads. So that is not an option. Finally, if the C sharp was the seventh, we would be talking about a D sharp seven chord. D sharp would want to resolve down a fifth to G sharp. G sharp is not in our key of C major, so that is not an option. Well, what about other secondary functions like the seven diminished? Well, this a major triad is very related to a C sharp diminished triad. That is the corresponding diminished. So that would mean that we could have a 7 diminished of 2 as well. And since that would be the root of that 7 diminished, it could be 7 diminished uh, in, an, in a 7 diminished 6 or 7 diminished 7, or an inversion of that. So I'm going to put the 7 here in parentheses in both cases because we know that's an option. So secondary functions, it works, it gets our job done. Let's see if we can use modulation to harmonize that and how would it be different. So in this case, this pitch C sharp gets harmonized with an A major triad or a C sharp diminished triad. And that would work, we could do that. When it comes to modulation, what we want to do is we want to say, well, what keys have a C-sharp in them? Because any of those keys can be in consideration. So if we look here at our circle of fifths, and I say, well, what keys have the note C-sharp in them? Well, D major is where, uh, the first place where we introduce C-sharp. We go the sharp direction. It's also in A. Actually, I should use a check mark here, so that would be clear. So it's in D major, A major, E major, B major, F sharp major, C sharp major. All of those major keys. So we could say, we could modulate from the key of C major to D major, A major, E major, B major, F sharp major, C sharp major, and we could find a diatonic chord in one of these six new keys and harmonize that C sharp. And then we would continue in that new key to using just traditional harmonic progression. If, our, if we're harmonizing a melody, that might be a little bit more of a challenge, but that's certainly an option. And we can then also open up the world to, the cor to corresponding minor keys. This is just to be the major keys. But what minor keys have the pitch C sharp in them. And those are also an option. 
again, if we we're if we're doing this as harmonizing a melody, we we might not be able to choose what note. And if the note that follows the C sharp isn't in this new key, then that's not an option. But if we're composing a melody, then we have we have all those options to it for us. So we now know we can use a 5 of 2 or 7 diminished of 2. We could modulate to any of these major keys or corresponding minor keys that have a C sharp in them. What about mode mixture? Well, in mode mixture, what, what we have is kind of a, a use of parallel minor. And the notes that are different in the parallel minor is that E turns into E flat, A turns into A flat, and B turns into B flat. So scale degrees 3, 6, and 7. Well, you'll notice that none of those notes that we get from using the parallel minor is the note C sharp. That said, when we go to, as you're using the same step-by-step -step method that I'm giving, for, giving to you right now, when you get to flat three, you say, oh, look, that's, I could totally use mode mixture to harmonize an E flat, a flat three in the key, or a, an A flat, or a B flat. I, I know those notes are now become available to me by using mode mixture. So as I'm going through these, this step-by-step -step process for the note C sharp in the key of C, which is sharp one, some things are going to work, some things are not. And that's going to change when I go to another pitch and its relationship within the key. That's why I laid out these five different areas where we drive chromatic harmonies from. So in the case of sharp one, we can use secondary functions, we can modulate, we cannot use mode mixture. That won't work. When we deal with Neapolitan chords, Neapolitan chords are essentially a flat two in our key. In the key of C major, that would be D flat, F, and A flat, which if we convert it, we have flat two and flat six. So again, if we had a D flat that we needed to harmonize, we could use a Neapolitan chord. And if you remember back, I was just saying, C sharp is not the same as D flat. It's because C sharp is not in the Neapolitan chord, but D flat is. So the other big question that's going to come into play when you're harmonizing a melody is, does it have to be harmonized as a C sharp? Or can you, as the arranger, convert it into a D flat? Well, if you do, it has to be able to resolve like the D-flat would in a Neapolitan chord. So you might be able to make an enharmonic shift if you can make it resolve the way that that enharmonic shift note would naturally resolve. But just at, a, at first blush, we will not be able to use a Neapolitan chord to harmonize our sharp one. Well, what about augmented six chords? Here again, it can kind of, as augmented six chords uh, can function and resolve to any scale degree. Uh, just any scale, most of our diatonic scale degrees. It's most commonly of five. So if it's of five, in the key of C, that would be A flat C, F sharp, and then you have either, sometimes you can have a D or an E flat, in that augmented six chord as well. And it goes, the A flat resolves down to scale degree five, and the F sharp resolves up to scale degree five. And that's your augmented six res resolution. Now you can have an augmented six of something other than scale degree five. And so sometimes what I, I like to do is I like to consider this, even though this is more of a, not really a chord, it's more of a, a uh, voice leading motion. I consider this your root, I consider this the seventh, this my third, and then here this could be my fifth. So if I look at that and I say, well, I know that I have a C sharp. 
C sharp wants to resolve to D. The pitch that Mark likes to resolve up is often that quote unquote seventh. So in this case, E flat, G, C sharp would work really well. So you could harmonize this C sharp with a augmented six chord of scale degree two, which isn't a big surprise because we our secondary functions were also of Roman numeral two. And I could have, and, and in this case, our pitches would be E flat, G, C sharp. That would be the core of our augmented six chord. Maybe I put in an A natural to make it a French augmented six. Maybe I put in a B flat to make it a German augmented six. Um, the German augmented six has the most resolution issues to it. So that one will not work in this particular situation. So I'm actually limited to either the French or Italian augmented six. Either one of those would be a way that I could harmonize a C sharp and resolve to a D minor triad afterwards. So there you go. There is a, a very superficial beginning of the step-by-step -step process that you could use when trying to figure out how to harmonize a note that is not in the scale, a non-diatonic pitch. Let me just quickly summarize. Look for what secondary functions might work, and you're basically saying that pitch is either the root, third, fifth, or seventh. And see if modulation might work for you. See if mode mixture might work. Here again with mode mixture, if you have access to flat three, flat six, or flat seven, that's a, that'll be a very good thing to use. Neapolitans give you access to flat twos and flat sixes. The augmented six chord has a whole other spectrum of pitches that you can then use. So I hope that gives you a good place to start when you are looking on how to harmonize something that's not in your key signature. Good luck.